Kevin Durant is one of the best get a basket guys in the NBA ever. And so this is why I keep talking about this Kevin Durant thing, even though the NBA season's done until October, is the rumors now are Kevin Durant wants to play for the Celtics. Okay, so you can look at it two ways. Boston says, no thanks, we're going to bring the band back, but Milwaukee's going to be better next year because Chris Middleton's back and Joe Ingles. Sixers, I think, are going to be better. Uh, Tyrese Maxey is emerging as a massive star in this league. Miami, always well-run and well-coached, certainly could be better, right? But you could bring it all back. You did get to the finals and roll the dice. Or you could bring in Kevin Durant. It's going to hurt your chemistry a little bit. He can be a little high-maintenance. You're going to have to give up some of your bench and some of your future to do it, but I don't think it's a terrible idea. Uh, The coach of the Celtics has coached KD. KD always gives you a great effort on the defensive end. He's not Kyrie Irving to the Celtics, who didn't want to participate defensively, or James Harden, who doesn't participate defensively. KD always plays defense at a very high level. And he's also, we saw Jason Tatum, was not a reliable finisher in big games. So you get a great historic finisher. Um, I think I think it makes sense to bring in KD for a Jalen Brown, a top bench player, and two draft picks. But I think we have to come to terms, and I've seen this in Hollywood recently, we got to come to terms with what KD is. We thought we saw him as a lead actor. He's a great supporting actor. He worked in Golden State, and I believe he would work in Boston because the culture's already been created. There are certain people, like I'll give you an example, Tom Cruise. You can, if you're a movie studio, commit to 10 movies with Tom Cruise. He's totally into it, totally committed. He'll deliver box office. He'll, he can manage people. Tom Cruise's life is movies. Marlon Brando was talented. There's no way you could give Marlon Brando that responsibility. There's absolutely no way. He's just really talented. And I think KD's more Brando than Cruise. I think LeBron, Wade, Kobe, um, Giannis, there are players I will build around. They are committed. They're unwavering. They don't wander. They elevate others. They just have the right personality for it. And I think KD is closer to Kawhi or Kyrie or James Harden. You view them as, as the movie star. And what they are is great supporting actors. They can't, you can't build a foundation around them. They're either quirky, odd, nonverbal, high maintenance. It's a lot of things. Now, I, of all those players, KD is easily the most gifted offensively. And I've said before, I think he's the only guy in league history that would beat Michael Jordan in a game of one-on-one if they had a tournament. I think he's a great player, um, but he's different. He is more Brando than Cruz. He is more Kawhi than LeBron. And we just got to come to terms with it. That's why I think Boston works, just like the Warriors worked. The Warriors, if you go back to Kawhi's career, San Antonio had the culture built. They added him championship. Toronto had a terrific culture built. They added him championship. The Clippers needed Kawhi to be the foundational piece. It's not what he is. He's not verbal, doesn't really communicate. That's not what he is. So they're trying to build the franchise around him. You're going to have to build it around Ty Lue's brain and the front office's ability to get versatile defenders. It's a very versatile roster. You can't build it around him. And it's the same thing in Hollywood. There's just certain people you can build a franchise around. And then there's just really talented actors. And there's very few of these. And it's not really a knock on KD. I mean, it's very easy, top of my head, to just name the guys I'd build my franchise around. You know, MJ, Duncan, Magic, Bird, Giannis. I mean, it's a short list of about 10 guys. D. Wade. Like, it's a tiny list. And then there's a bunch of talented guys. And I think we just have to... That's why I think KD to Boston actually works. They got it. They got the coach. They got the culture. They've got the intensity. They got the brains upstairs. Dude, come on in and deliver big buckets. And I think mostly that's what KD wants to do. And KD, it looks like, understands that. He understands that he'd be joining a great culture. I think KD looks at it and thinks, it makes sense for my Northeast business. It worked with the Warriors where I could just join something that was already rolling. And to KD's credit, he gets that. Um, but and, and I think we have to, I think we've always thought for years and years there was this, KD's better than LeBron. And I was always like, LeBron is so much more than a basketball player. 
LeBron is leadership and stability and elevation of others and a team builder and confronts the media and not really that prickly and deals with crisis well. And LeBron is so much more than get a hoop guy. You know, he's Jordan. He's, he's, he's magic. He's well beyond. And it's not really a criticism. Not everybody is built like Tom Cruise to build the franchise around. Not everybody's built for that. Milwaukee's got one. <laughs> the Lakers have had a few through the years. It's a small number. I've had this theory that New York's baseball teams are so hot, Rick Buecher. Mm-hmm. Brooklyn's in the news. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> not, not necessarily for all the good, the, all the best reasons, yes. But there are times in some of these big cities, L.A., New York, Chicago, you do make n- moves sometimes not just about winning but to be relevant sure. in a highly distracted competitive market. And if the, if, I think the Knicks going after Donovan Mitchell with R.J. Barrett and, and, and Jalen Brunson, I think Donovan Mitchell is not a need – but he does get them discussed. He probably makes them more captivating. So I think the New York Giants have a, they have a problem in the market. Well, there's demonstrating an interest. There's making yourself relevant. And then there's actually making the move. And sometimes if you just demonstrate, we're trying to get something done, that at least tells your fan base that you're trying. As right. opposed to, no, we're good. We're good where we are. And everybody looks at you and says, well, not compared to everybody else who's in your market. So the Giants, if they want to go, they've, they've been bad eight of the last nine years, I think. The idea they can just sit on their hands with Daniel Jones, I do not get it in that market. Again, if it's San Antonio, you're the NBA team, yeah. they're going to be bad next year, but that's the game in town, so you go to the games. It's also a matter of what you're saying to your team. Yeah. Like you, Walking into a season, you're going, wait a minute, we're coming back with the same crew? It's a little bit, not to give you a transition, but... It's a little bit why Kevin Durant is asking out of Brooklyn. He's looking at what they had at the end of last year and what they have now, and he's like, how, how are we possibly going to be better? Well, I would think that anybody in the Giants locker room would be thinking the same thing. So um, Kevin Durant, a story out today that Boston is one of the landing spots, preferred yeah. landing spots. Mm-hmm. And I've said before, I'd give up Jalen Brown. I'd give up a really high-end bench player and a couple of draft picks. I'm yep. good with it. I'm not dismantling the team. Now, chemistry probably takes a hit. Depth takes a hit. A little of your future takes the hit. But he's a big game player, big game finisher. Tatum, we're not sure if he can do that. Yep. It makes sense to me. But my other takeaway is Kevin Durant's more Kawhi than LeBron. We're finding out you can't build a culture around him. But right. you can add him to a great culture, and he's unbelievable. Right. And I think Kevin's coming to terms with, I don't want the day-to-day nonsense. Right. Just put me on the Warriors or the Celtics, and I'll be the, I'll be the shot maker with yep. a minute yep. left. Yep. And I, so I think Boston works. Yes, I think it does too. There was one name that you didn't include in, from the GMs that I've talked to about this deal. The linchpin as to who it would work best for is whether Marcus Smart is in the deal or not. So Jalen and Marcus. If you're sending Jalen and Marcus, that's a great deal for Brooklyn. But if I'm Boston, I want to keep Marcus Smart because Marcus Smart is my leader. He is my pace setter. Yeah. He's my Draymond Green. I don't want Kevin Durant and Jason Tatum to be the leaders of my team because neither of one of them really embraces that or gets it, it galvanizes everybody. Right. Now, Emo Yudoka has demonstrated that he will hold stars accountable. Yeah. He doesn't care who you are. He will hold you accountable. And I would assume that he would do the same thing with Kevin Durant. But I still need a voice in the locker room because it started with Marcus Smart calling out Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. That's where it started. That's where the turnaround last year started. I would need the same thing. And if I don't have Marcus Smart, then I lose a lot of physicality and I lose a lot of leadership. Yeah, no, there are players that I, this, I've defended Draymond Green. If you look at the plus minus of the Warriors, him on the court, him not in the playoffs, mm-hmm. it's different. In fact, there's some uh, there's some analytic where he was like a seven point five. It was higher than Steph and Clay. So there are these players. They they I always say there there are there are you know it's it's like it's easy to just say Draymond's a glue guy, but he also can be a catalyst. Sure, I think Marcus Smart is is. I mean, if you go to the numbers last year in the playoffs, when Marcus shot well, they yeah. won. Yeah, every time. Yeah. Now that's not. You don't get that delivery, but often, but when he three times in a series plays well offensively, they win all those games. Yeah, and it's also, it's the chemistry of the team. Right, It's how all the pieces go together. Marcus Smart is comfortable. I mean, he's the reason he was defensive player of the year. 
I'm comfortable taking on the toughest assignment. Yeah. I'm comfortable with whatever shots I get. I'm comfortable playing off of Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. But I'm also going to ask Jalen and Jason to play hard and to commit themselves to defense. Who does that for the Celtics if Marcus Smart is not there? And yes, Ime would do that. But you always need that guy in the locker room who is going to support what your coach is asking to be done. So sometimes there's a take, and I just don't understand everybody's take on it. I think Mm -hmm. the Lakers are bad. Mm -hmm. I think their bench is weak. I think LeBron and AD are obviously not going to be available for 80 games. So you need elements beyond those two. Yep. Westbrook's not it. This, if I have to hear one more time, you know, let's give them some more games together. It doesn't work. Stop it. Yeah. Okay. So they're going to move him. They want to move him. I thought the other day, Chris Haynes' story, when they had multiple things sourced, and all the things sourced felt like shots at Westbrook. <laughs> so what do you, how do you think this transpires before the start? You, you know, they said, we want cohesion, a Westbrook problem, uh, selflessness, New roles and the off the offense runs through AD was like Russell. We hope this annoys you. Yeah, that's what it felt like to me. Yeah, no. I, look, clearly LeBron and Clutch would like to get Westbrook out of there. Yes, that's without question. Darvin Ham can't play that card because there's still the he question may have to coach of, him. He may have to coach him, and so he has to demonstrate that I still believe in you, and we can still make this work. But. Look, there are no easy – the bottom line is there are no easy answers for the Lakers. Everybody thinking that somehow you're going to flip Westbrook into what? No. You're gonna, if, you, if you decide to buy him out, if you decide to move him to give somebody else cap relief, that's the best that you are going to do. And so I understand the dilemma that the Lakers are in because, to your point, okay, you can say it doesn't work, but who's going to play? Like, the real question you have is – do we try to make it work with Westbrook? Do we try to demonstrate that he can still play a little bit and get through some of the season? Or do we just say, we're moving in another direction without him? We're bet it's addition by subtraction. I think, I think when everybody in a business knows mm. the truth, address the truth, and move on. I think you're much better just saying, we're going into camp. Let's not pretend Something works. I'm going to say the other side of that is, though, Westbrook is not the heart of all their problems. No. Moving off of Westbrook, getting him out of there doesn't dramatically change who you are. But he's a solution for none of them. He's not not all their problems. He solves none of their issues. Okay. He's bad for chemistry. He's bad for shooting. He no longer defends. This is not personal. He doesn't solve any of what they need. They need more versatile wing defenders who can shoot and defend. Yes. He doesn't do any of that. Okay, fair. I'm going to push back on you when it okay. comes to chemistry. Everything else, I'm fine. I don't think Russell is a negative with that team. I don't think he's causing yeah. problems in the locker room. I think players like him. Yeah. I think they struggle to play with him. But For I, sure. By all accounts, he's a good dad. Charity, he's not a bad person at all. It, it, it hurts me to see what has happened to Russell I've Westbrook. Had, I had somebody I know that is kind of in his circle said the same thing is, this is hard for him. Yeah. This is hometown. Yes. It's well, brutal. Not, not only is it his hometown, and not only is it turning out to be a disaster when he thought it was going to be everything he hoped it would ever be, but he's a guy who's always played hard. Oh, he cares. Right? And he's done all... Everything off the yeah. off the court, right? So, to see him being just dragged now, yeah. is really hard. That said, he is somewhat the architect of his own demise. Yes, I don't think there's any question. You know, it, it is. Um, I texted um, Rich Paul yesterday about Ben Simmons. I said I'd like to be ahead of the story, not behind it. How's he doing? And we were talking about Ben Simmons. Um, let's talk about somebody who has played and will play for sure, Kyrie yeah. Irving. Yeah. So there, there's there been a lot of discussions. I mean, I, I saw a story today. We didn't make it a, 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 a rant, but it was two reports in New York from reporters in New York. Kyrie hates the owner. He hates the GM. Yeah. Then Kyrie's agent came out. Another story says that's just not true. He doesn't hate him. Whatever it is, <laughs> when stuff like that gets out, there's yeah. something there. Yeah. What does his future look like? Because if Kevin Durant is bailing on it, yeah. 
I'm not building around Kyrie. He can be an accessory piece. I'm not building anything around him. Right. My understanding is Kyrie already has a place in L.A. He wants to be here. He wants to be a Laker. He wants to be a Laker. And I would not be surprised if ultimately that gets done. Brooklyn wants to move on. They have made that clear. By the way, <clears> he, <throat> he does solve one of the Lakers' issues. He is a brilliant shooter. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and by the way, short term, he could be fine with chemistry. Now, he's a terrible defender, but this team yeah. needs shooters yeah. because LeBron gets you shots. They just can't land them. Well, he normally does. The question is, will LeBron play that role again? And I know we look heard a thousand times, if only he had guys who could shoot, that last year would have been different. Malik Monk can shoot. Malik Monk, when he had the opportunity to be a scorer, demonstrated that he could be a scorer last year. Yeah. LeBron James was looking at chasing a scoring title last season. That if if he's gonna make the transition back to I'm a distributor and I am a playmaker and I'm not worried about scoring, then I'm with you. The Kyrie Irving combination can work. You still have issues at the defensive end, and it still comes down to Anthony Davis. Can Anthony Davis be healthy? Can he be the backbone to all that defense? You still don't have multiple defensive wings. So right. Kyrie, is Kyrie a little bit better of an answer than Russell Westbrook? Absolutely. For his I, offensive prowess. I will give you that. But it's, it's a scunch. Like, let's not suggest that, you know, Kyrie Irving is the solution to all their problems. No, he's not. I, it's just like in my life. I don't need people in my life to be a solution to all my problems. But if you can solve something. Yeah. I don't need you. To, I don't, okay, but you have multiple people in your lives solving all sorts of little problems. That's right. With, with Colin. And so that's why I don't have any problems. Right. Because I have orchestrated right. this net of right. people to solve my little small issues. A- exactly. And I'd like to think I'm part of that small net. <laughs> that said, LeBron James has, like, you got one string. You don't have a whole net. But one of his issues is the Lakers were first or second in the league in getting open threes, and nobody could land them. Kyrie will solve that issue. Westbrook cannot. Kyrie is a really, really great, be- one of the most beautiful jump shot, best small closer of all time. Nate Archibald, Kyrie Irving, small closer all time, way up there. Yeah, I- off, the, off the dribble, off the dribble shooter, he, without question. But again, it comes back to, is LeBron James going to be a playmaker? Kyrie's not a playmaker. Let's be clear. No, he no, shouldn't no. even be defined as a point guard. No, he's not. He's, no, he's, he's a, a finisher. He's a shooting guard. He's the best small finisher he's ever. He's a scorer. He doesn't have assists. Agreed. LeBron will be your playmaker, and Kyrie's got to get over that. Kyrie acknowledged we didn't get along the first time because Kyrie said, I screwed up. I wasn't mature enough. I like that. I like owning your stuff. Last week, you owned your psychedelic past. I love that. I did. I did. It was, we, didn't, we, we don't need to revisit that no. again. 